Hello there gamers, I'm Penrose 776 this is Fire Emblem Heroes, we're on Chaos Season, it's the same old defense team because it worked so well last Chaos Season, and I mean, it should still do so well right now. We're up against Fallen Maria, Arcane Plumeria, Fallen Edelgard plus 10, uh, Legendary Hollywood plus 1, and Ash plus 1, a very... Uh, the team that's not here, okay. It's, come on, you've got a plus 10 full in Edelgard. At least let her get shredded to pieces by my awesome team. No? Okay. Well, um, let's try it again, shall we? <laughs> Welcome to Chaos Season. Same old team as usual. We're up against Legion plus 10, Brave Corin, Duo Legion, Summer Fjorm, and Legendary Azura plus two. That first Legion there is, I believe, New Year's Legion. Um, that being said, that's not who they're leading with. They are using Summer Fjorm as their opener. Pretty strong opener at that, but not winning in speed against Gulveig means that they probably aren't in a great situation after this. Here's why. Yep, 14 damage and 33 damage. Add that together, that makes just the right amount of damage. And thanks to her low hit points, uh, we can Wings of Mercy in after that as well. Azura quickly dealt with. Um, our Azura. Oh, maybe, um... Yeah, worth a try, but no. And that's how things end up, turn one, and well, that is an ending they didn't want. So, there we go, our first battle finished with an actual fight. Speaking of, up against us here, next we have Summer Edelgard plus one, Fallen Byleth plus one, Brave Corin, a legendary Ninian, and Brave Camilla plus two. Weird. Must be their bonus unit, I guess? But aside from that, the classic show of meta-relevant units. Fallen Byleth taking the first hit. Again, kind of low on support. Doesn't get her damage reduction online because she misses her vantage, her speed-based vantage, and so now as it always happens on this defense, Gulveig is putting in the heavy lifting. Brea now getting danced, runs into Corin. So we're going to miss the kill. Are we, however, going to charge the Gale Force? My sources say yes. And, well, is Corin near save? No, she is not near save. So, going round the back, finishing off Camilla as well. Assuming that is their bonus unit, they now can't get a bonus kill. And, well, also they've lost half their team. So, another convincing victory. Okay. And keep running. And in fact, I do intend to keep running. Next up here, we have Legendary Seleth plus four. Peony. Uh, we have Legendary Julia plus five. Wind Lord and Tea Time Lysithia. Setting up on the right side, out of range for the time being. I assumed they were looking for a bolt tower play. However, that may not be the case here. Sending in Julia, full effective damage gets reduced heavily by Corin here. And we are going to hit back for a non zero amount. I won't accept defeat. But non-zero is about the best that I can say about it. Legendary Julia is pretty specialized at dealing with dragons, after all. Still, the fact that we're taking two combats is very good for cutting through the enemy's action efficiency. They are now 
backing out. Hinoka should be able to deal with Julia just fine. Just fine indeed. But we do actually have a potential problem here because <laughs> Selif can handle Gulvake pretty well, actually. If Brave hit chops through her damage reduction. And yeah, Zero, that's not helping. Now the Bolt Tower goes off. Um, Claude wins this. Honestly, overkill. <laughs> Gets one pot. And they are able to back off some amount. Now, Claude is fully buffed up. I'd like to remind you. The world made new. But doesn't quite live that combat. And well, who knew? Legendary Selif, all the times that he's been shredded to tiny little bits before, he finally got an opportunity to shine there. And he took it. But they did miss one pot. So, you know, we'll we'll take half the credit for that win. Next up, Timera. Duo Kagero. Harmonic Anna. Mm -hmm. Peony and Altina plus one. Pretty much the same Altina build I've been using, actually. I uh, stole Oblivion's Altina for Aetherade's offense purposes. Um, can this Timera not counterattack at range? Is that true? Because <laughs> if it is, they may have a little bit of an issue here. She does get to tank Freya as well, which may have been what they were intending with that positioning, but... This is also looking a little dubious. We'll see how strong Vital Astra is. It's pretty strong. I wouldn't say it's necessarily strong enough, though. Uh, Gale Force has been activated. Wings of Mercy has also been activated. Uh, Altina, one of her weaknesses, unfortunately. Uh, she doesn't have NCD. And... Our positioning working out incredibly well here. We get a dance in as well. Maximum action economy. Kangaro dealt with. Anna is the only one left. Now, I don't think Freya has this. He does not. But in the end, we still managed to take out all of those units except for one. And that is a very strong single turn to force that surrender. Okay, who's next? We're looking at here. Peony, Gulveig, good choice. Legendary Robin plus one. Brave Dimitri plus ten, everyone has one. And Brave Corin plus one. Brave Dimitri with the Vayne's support is actually a pretty solid choice, I'm not going to lie. And with the legendary Robin as well, Brave Corin becomes fast enough to actually beat Anna Gulveig. Yeah. So that's a little bit of an issue. But I'm, I'm sure we can find a way around that. Azura. Not helping. <laughs> well, I mean, it's my fault, really, for not giving so much overlap here, but hey. 
We didn't need that dance. So they do get a turn two, and not just any turn two, a Gulveig turn two. And unlike our Gulveig, who lost to Brave Corrin matchup, their Gulveig is going to win the Brave Corrin, I assume is going to win the Brave Corrin matchup, anyway. Um, because of the help that Legendary Robin offers. You see, attack plus 33, speed plus 33, those are not small numbers. However, despite all of that, doesn't quite outspeed Claude. Does finish Claude, but does not outspeed Claude. And interestingly enough, choosing to back off, they could have chosen to take one more kill. Personally, I would have gone for one more kill in that situation, but instead backing off, leaving Dimitri in, and I don't know how well that's going to work out for them, because despite being of the whole big defense man, um, we've got a big defense goat of our own here, and they don't have a front line anymore. Freya yeah, defeats Dimitri, defeats Peony, two units down. Uh, Hinoka makes an attempt. This is my path. And, well, they can win from this position, but do they want to win after losing two units? My Calculation says they don't. Okay, next battle. You know, we get a lot of these things, but they're going pretty quick. We've got Tari Azura, Joe Kagero, uh, Brave Robin, Brave Chrome plus one, and Legendary Julia plus one. Looks like some sort of Kagero play being attempted here, stepping on the trap, because she doesn't care and doing a massive Kanto play because she doesn't care. You got that? And, to their credit, they're actually out of range, or are they? <laughs> nice frickin' try, Buster. You have enabled Gulveig to put you into a whole dimension of pain. And admittedly, Julia is pretty tanky. When it comes to rest stats, at least, but Gulveig don't care. So that's. There, two units sniped there, and just like last time, they are not having any of that. Four more battles to go. Pretty similar team to what we've seen before here. Hatari Azura, Gulveig, Duochrom, Timara, and Ninja Orin. The ninja version of Corrin. been your Corrin informational video for the day. Um, setting up on the right side, potentially looking at dealing with, well, our pot to begin with, but also potentially that Corrin there after a bolt tower. There's a bolt tower. Not sure why they decided to go about it that way, specifically. Unless Corrin literally failed to deal any damage to Corrin. But Chrome can solve that part of the problem. Gulveig online can deal with Gulveig. But they did waste their Ninjoran attack, so they're very quickly going to run out of extra actions, and I think they've just realized that as well. There is no escaping for them in this situation. 
just a couple more to go. This time we're looking at Legendary Anoka. Alright, Wind Clawed, Duo Peony plus one, uh, Harmonicana plus one, and Ghoul Vague. As far as it goes, four out of five members of this team I am running on my own Chaos Season offense. Um, coincidentally, most of those members are on my Chaos Season defense as well. What can I say? I think Flyers are the best for Chaos. Wind Clawed makes the check on Brave Corin, so they take that. And they are safety fencing us, giving them a second turn to clean up all our big evil threats. And again, backing out by the no, they are not. But, because they've dealt with Gulveig, they can now choose to tank just Azura, and Azura is not much of a nuke in anyone's stretch of the imagination. Very smart move there, actually. If they had not tanked Azura, they might have been getting a Hinoka or a Claude to the face very unexpectedly. Now, they did also Bolt Tower us. And they don't even need extra actions to clean up here, but they do have that duo dance if they want to use it. Probably could have got pots as well, but I'm assuming this was their last battle of season, so they didn't need to. And, well, that's the strength of the Flyer team. Obviously, it's strong as a defense, but well piloted in a player's hands, it can clean up pretty much everything on offense as well. And they didn't even use half of it. So, what do we have here as we come to the tail end? We've got Gulveig plus two, Brave Crom plus six, Legendary Alincia, Duo Kagero plus one, and Peony plus 10. Okay. Gulveig into Corrin, classic matchup, seen it before. Your future is set. And as we've seen before, Gulveig is a pretty solid counter to Corin, depending on how you choose to play her. Gulveig also a side counter to Gulveig, funnily enough. Two actions used up, and in classic hit and run strategy, they are now running. They are now miscalculating how far they need to run. We've got charge on our side. So Peony eats a little foul to the face. There's our dance. Because they trapped our Azura in, they actually guaranteed the dance there instead of being able to tank Azura instead. Um, so that's even funnier. And team rolls out two units dead. Rapid surrender ensues. And that, my friends, is the end of the season. I've got very big news coming very soon, so keep your ears peeled for that. I've got fun things going on on various seasons. You know, anime season, that season exists. Dark season, also a season that exists. Yeah, look forward to that. Um, thank you all for watching. Leave your likes, comments. Comments actually really help with the algorithm, by the way. And I'll see you all next time. Panrost out.